Welcome to First Baptist Church of Gretna. We are so glad that you have chosen to join us today as we worship the Lord. We invite you to praise him as you would if we were together here in person. Sing along to our songs and listen to the words and message that has been prepared for this day. We're so fortunate at this time to have many celebrations. We celebrate the marriage of Calvin and Carrie Easley and rejoice in their love for each other and pray God's blessings on them. We celebrate with our 2020 graduates and congratulate Ethan Osborne as he graduates from Gretna High School, Lily Page Motley as she graduates from Virginia Commonwealth University, and William Lilly as he graduates from Piedmont Virginia Community College. May they be filled with God's guidance, mercy, and love. We also celebrate Memorial Day, a day of remembrance for the sacrifices of those who have died in service to our nation. We honor the brave men and women who have served in the past and are continuing to serve today. We express great appreciation for their brave service and the precious freedom that we have today. May God bless these men and women and their families. We did receive a note of appreciation from Bo and Leah Johnson. They say, many have made memorial donations to our church in the name of my daughter, Sherry Hunter. Leah and I wish to express our sincere thanks for those thoughtful contributions. God bless Bo and Leah Johnson. And just a reminder of a mission opportunity for you, assistance is needed in the ministry on the Eastern Shore. Please continue to pray for Marissa Sanchez in this ministry. You may also provide cloth face masks, Walmart cards, or monetary donations. And if you would like to donate, please provide to the church office by May 31st. As we worship and praise the Lord this day, may we do as Psalm 100 says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts and minds as we ready ourselves for God's message.
Hi, I'm sitting here at the dining table where Pastor Bob and I eat our meals together. And I wanted to be able to sit here so that I can do a little activity that I wanted to share with you just because I think it's fun and it's always good to have another fun activity to do at home. This is really simple. You might need a little bit of help. That's okay. It's something you can do with your family. And if you're older, you can help younger ones know how to do it. We're going to make a puppet. Now, this is from a book that I've had obviously for a really long time called Folding Paper Toys. And all you're going to need for this is paper. Crayons will be helpful too, or colored pencils or markers, but if you have just plain old white paper in your house like this, you'll just need some help to get it into a square because usually the paper in our houses is, is a rectangle, right? Longer on one side than the other. So you'll need just plain white paper, <clears throat> excuse me, that you can make into a shorter square. So here's what we do. We take this square piece of paper and we're going to fold it in half like this. So fold it, crease it like that, and then you're going to open it up and fold each side into the middle. So what I mean is I'm going to fold one side over to that middle part like that. And then I'm going to take the other side and fold it into the middle. And you'll want to make sure that the folded flaps, that there's a tiny bit of space in between them so that you can now fold it in half that way. Okay, so you've got the square, one side folded into the middle, the next side folded into the middle, and then folded this way. Now I'm gonna give it a good press down so that all of the edges are smashed together. All you do now is you take the bottom and bring it to the top and make a fold. Okay, so fold it up, make a crease, and here's the last part. You've got a little thing like this, so now take one side, fold it down to the edge. It's getting thick, so you're gonna have to press it kind of hard. And then take the other side and fold it down to that crease. And now, look what happens. You've got this thing that sort of is starting to look like a mouth. And on the back side, you've got little pockets. So here's a pocket you can, where you can put your fingers. And then here's another pocket where you could put your thumb. And now you can go snap, 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 like a little puppet. I made some earlier because I wanna show you what you can do with them if you've got those crayons or pencils or markers, you can draw faces on them and maybe you wanna make a dog. So there's the dog and then I'm gonna put my finger in the pockets and on the inside I drew a little tongue so that you can now have a dog puppet that goes bark, 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 bark. Or you could make a cat It says meow, meow. Or you could make any kind of animal. You could make people. You, you let your imagination do whatever it wants to with these funny little puppets. You could just use it plain and 
use your imagination any way you want. Maybe it's a little secret puppet. And I think it's fun to have new things that we can do as an activity together. And you can go back and watch this video if you forget how to do any of it, but it's pretty simple. And the best part of it is that we're doing this together because we're a church family. And church families love one another and they love their neighbors and they do all of that because God loves us. And God asks us to love one another because Jesus has loved us first. So have some fun this week, make some puppets, and I'd love to see what you come up with. And maybe we'll make something else another time. But just remember that I love you and that God loves you, your church family loves you, and we'll see you soon, okay? Bye-bye. Good morning, everybody. Michael and I are here this morning to talk a little bit about how different things have been the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. We've all had to make some changes, the adults and the children, and I hope that everybody's had time to do some things that maybe they hadn't done before. Mm -hmm. And one of the big changes for you, Michael, and all the kids was not going to school. <laughs> how did you like that? That was a big change. I did like not going to school. You did? Mm -hmm. I like mom being the teacher. And I like mom being the teacher. Is she a good teacher? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, did you learn do some studies on the computer or just some mm -hmm. uh, some writing so, and I math? did some on the computer, but I don't do very much. Okay. Mm. All right. What about church? Um, what do you miss about going to church? Playing at church, um, playing with my friends at church. Okay. All that. And maybe singing, all the little kids up there singing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, what are some things that you've been doing at home that maybe you wouldn't have a chance to do, but you've been at home so much? What do you do? Um, you and Wyatt, what do y'all do? Um, we usually play a lot. Do you play in or out? Um, a lot. We do it in and out because we have to play in the garden sometimes. So, what is in your garden? Um, like, um, beans. I don't know what kind of beans they are. I think it's butter beans. They go. Yeah. Be yes, it's butter beans. They're gonna be grannies. <laughs> okay. All right. Tomato, tomatoes, watermelon. Um, big pumpkin, little pumpkins. And I don't know, there's a two more things, I think, but I don't know what they are. Yeah. Well, oh, carrots, too. Yeah, well, y'all planted a lot of stuff for your first garden, and I know it's going to do good because you water it every day, don't you? Mm -hmm. Well, what do you do for fun? I mean, do you play basketball? or? I play basketball. I play inside. I play outside. I play at your house sometimes. Okay, well, that's good. So we can always find something good out of these kind of difficult times we're having, can't we? Mm -hmm. And do some different things. And one day you'll be able to see your friends again. Mm -hmm. You want to tell everybody bye? Bye. Bye-bye. And we hope you stay safe and well and happy. Today I'd like to read from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 10. And today I'm reading from a Bible that was our mom's. Uh, it was given to her before she and dad got married by her mom, which is our granny. Okay, here goes with chapter four. No, chapter, yeah, chapter four, verses seven. Beloved, let us love one another, for the love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us, and he sent his Son to be the perpetuation of our sins. Hello, everyone. Thank you for watching the First Baptist Church video this morning with us. Pastor Bob has asked Dale and I to read the uh, verses for today, the pa scripture passage which comes from 1 Corinthians 13, 1 through 8. 
If I speak in the tongues of men or of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have a faith that can move mountains, but do not have love, I have nothing. If I give all I possess to the poor and give over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. Love, Love never, never fails. fails. But where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. Thanks again for watching this video today with us. Uh, we hope all of you have a great, marvelous, wonderful, God-blessed Memorial Holiday. And remember what the holiday is all about. And as Pastor Bob's friend would say from yesteryear, red, green. Everything gonna be all right. <laughs> Hello everyone, I hope you're okay. It's been a cold, rainy week. You know, when Jesus came along, we, we don't always stop to think about this. We, we don't think about the details. Jesus didn't just suddenly appear as the Messiah and everybody knew who he was and what he was about and that he was God in the flesh. When Jesus appeared, he appeared as a traveling rabbi. He was one of many, many, many who knows, maybe hundreds of traveling teachers who sought out disciples. In those days, men, women didn't do this. In those days, a patriarchal time, men who wanted to know the meaning of life often sought out a teacher, a philosopher, and became his student, and they paid the teacher, and that's how the teacher was able to pay his own bills. So Jesus was a a carpenter with his earthly father, Joseph, until he was 30. And then for three years, he was preaching, teaching, healing, and traveling. While he was preaching, teaching, healing, and traveling, it began to unfold to others that he was truly unique. He was unique in many ways in that he could heal others. He Although there were others who could also heal, Jesus did some things that no others could do. He restored sight to blind eyes. No one could do that, had done that. And he raised several from the dead. No one had done that. He also, though, his teaching was truly unique in that 
while other teachers were teaching how to have power, gain control, how to have knowledge. Jesus talked about things like humility. Nobody was talking about that. Jesus was talking about making provision for the poor. Nobody was talking about that. Jesus was talking about taking up crosses, and everybody knew what that meant. In Rome, non-Roman citizens who committed a capital offense were put to death outside cities on a hill, and they died there. So Jesus talked about taking up one's cross for truth and for others and justice. Nobody was doing that. And he talked about the importance of and the power of love. Nobody was doing that. To Jesus, love was foundational. It was about forgiveness. Nobody was talking about that. He talked about love in powerful ways and gave examples of love. For example, on the night in the upper room, the Lord's Last Supper, all the disciples gathered around the table, all 12. It was truly unfolding for them who he was and what was about to happen. They knew he was going to die. They knew he had taken up his cross and they knew that he would be crucified. Before supper that night, Jesus took a towel and wrapped it around his waist though and said, I must wash all your feet. That was the most humble thing anyone could do. If you were traveling and you went to a wealthy person's home, they had their servants wash your feet at the door because walking on dusty roads with sandals made your feet dirty. It was an act of incredible hospitality. So here was Jesus, the Messiah, soon to die on a cross washing the disciples' feet. Peter resisted. This is in John 13, the details. No, Lord, you'll not wash my feet. I may wash yours, but you not mine. And Jesus said he had to wash Simon Peter's feet. And he explained why. And then Simon said, well, then not just my feet. Wash my whole body, Lord. It is interesting to note that he even washed Judas' feet. Even though he knew Judas within a couple of hours would betray him and would be the reason for Jesus' arrest. At the end of all that foot washing, just before the meal would break up for the evening, the Lord's Last Supper, Jesus said, now, I give you a new commandment, not a request, a commandment that you love one another. In fact, here is from Luke's account what he said on that evening. If you only love those who love you, do you expect a pat on the back? Run-of-the-mill sinners do that after all. And if you only help those who help you, do you expect a medal? Garden variety sinners do that. If you only give for what you hope to get out of it, do you think that's charity? The stingiest of pawnbrokers does that. I tell you, you should even love your enemies. Help and give without expecting a return. You'll never, and I promise this, you'll never regret it. Live out this God-created identity the way God lives toward us, generously and graciously, even when we're at our worst, God is kind. So you be kind. He goes on a little more. Don't pick on people. Don't jump on their failures. Don't criticize their faults, unless of course you want the same treatment. Don't condemn those who are down. That hardness can boomerang. Be easy on people. You'll find life a lot easier Give away your life and you'll find life given back, but not merely given back, given back with bonus and blessing. Giving 
Not getting is the way. Generosity, after all, begets generosity. That's what Jesus said. That's what Jesus said about love and caring for one another. Now, there's a reason I bring all this up right now. In these several months when we've been cooped up at home together, in these several months where life has been hard and strange and different, in these several months when some of us have lost our jobs, had our hours cut, or are having to do things at work that are more challenging and inconvenient than ever before, we all probably have found ourselves feeling impatient, short-tempered. There's a good chance many of us, if not all of us, have lost our tempers and said some things we wish we hadn't have said to someone in our family, to someone at work, to a neighbor, to a friend. So I bring all of this up as a reminder. Jesus said, love one another. That's his way of saying regroup, apologize, give someone a second chance, try things over different new. That is the will of God. And he gave it to us, not as a request, as a command. There's a second reason I bring this up. You know, we're living in a time when any of us can pick and choose what we want to believe, to whom we will give our allegiance, to what politician will tickle our fancies. And what is beginning to happen now, actually it's been happening for a long time, but it's happening more, is we are making up our minds that someone who doesn't think like us, believe like us, vote like us, is bad, wrong, horrible, awful, to be judged. We're making a list. We're categorizing one another. We are dividing ourselves up in our families, in our communities, in our congregations, across the nation. That's another reason I bring up this week for all of us, myself included, Jesus said, the one who washed Judas' feet, love one another. Bind yourselves together. Stop your judging. Stop your categorizing. Stop your list making. Stop your harsh speech. Stop your thinking so ill of others. I had so hoped this horrible time among us would bring our country together. And yet, we just seem more deeply divided than ever before. And I sense that it's going to get worse and worse. I am looking for somebody out there, more people, to speak about God's love the kind of love God has for us, exhibited for us in Scripture and in the person of Jesus Christ, who said, love one another. I hope we won't forget that. God bless you and your efforts to live in these difficult times in peace and with joy and hope. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, these are hard days, challenging times, and many of us are feeling battered like the weather has battered us all this week. Some, in fact, are feeling like giving up, no matter what we're facing in our personal lives, in our homes, 
in our community as a nation. Give us hope, give us peace, and unite us. We make our prayer in Jesus' name and for his sake, and all of God's people said, Amen.